So you've been working on a piece and notice that something is a bit off. It doesn't feel cohesive. The parts are good, but not the whole. And there are several elements that create cohesion in a piece. Line, rhythm, color, contrast. So in this episode of Art Critique, we're going to focus on cohesion. Hi, I'm Unkempt Snuggle Pepper. If you're new or returning, welcome to my channel. If you want to submit your own art to be critiqued, uh, be sure to check down below for the link. So I will make a note on anatomy that this arm wouldn't be out to the side quite that far. If it is, then this is going to be on a slanted plane rather than going straight across her body and then coming down like that. Um, her arm would actually foreshorten and hold it about there. I think that's my biggest note on anatomy. I'm not going to worry too much. There's supposed to be a giant scythe right here. And the original poster said not to worry too much about the background. It's a work in progress. So my first suggestion for creating cohesion is to zoom out. This is true in traditional art. This is true in digital art. Whenever we are creating, we tend to get really close to something and make teeny tiny details, but if we look in our viewfinder, we're not going to see all of those details. Staying zoomed out is going to help us see how elements are interacting with one another. Number two, the original poster mentioned that the shading is all over the place, and I agree. When I usually create artwork, as a, a larger piece, I put down the flat local color, local color being her skirt is green. And as soon as I get all my local colors in, I go in and add my shadows. So I think the green to the yellow and the brown all work very well together as local colors. However, they're not cohesive in how they are shaded. So the first thing I would do is establish a light source and I'm going to go based on her face. So my light source is coming in like this. And so everything I do from that point is going to be because of this light source. In her face, I'm going to keep those shadows, but in her dress, it doesn't follow the same light source. So um, her chest would be collecting the light, her arms. If it's strong enough to make this harsh of a shadow on her face, then similar shadows should be throughout her outfit. And so before I go in and start adding light and dark, I'm also going to talk about color picking. So we have this shade of green. It's a horrible place to put that. So we have this shade of green. I'm going to say is my local color. And as we get darker, we aren't changing hue at all. As I go towards shadow, I want to move towards blue. If this is sunlight, which the background implies, then the light source is warm. Therefore, the shadows will be cool. And the closest route to purple and blue through green is to get progressively towards teal green. And I'm going to get slightly more saturated as I become darker. And then here, I'm going to move a little lighter. And this time I'm going to move more towards yellow. So that's how I would color pick for her dress. And then for her face, that color, um, that's a little too light. That's a much more accurate skin tone. It moves towards red as it becomes darker. So I am moving the hue, meaning um, is it yellow, red, blue, green, towards either purple or, purple or blue. And then I'm moving within my square, slightly more saturated each time I get darker. And then if you wanted to include um, a more saturated tone, that's what would, would go with the, the cheeks, the lips, um, the knuckles. With the hair, it's hard to tell if it's supposed to be different colors or if 
that's the the shading so I'm going to go with kind of a medium warm gray and just like everything else I'm going to move towards a more saturated color a little easier to pick up over there So how am I going to establish light source? If the light source is coming from this direction, the next thing I'm going to do is ask what gets the shadow. So in her face, this hair would cast a bit of a shadow. The side of her face gets the shadow. Right, her hands, this side is actually facing towards the light, so that, that shadow is going to be very minor. But this plane made by her, her knuckles, the way she's holding it, is going to be away from the light. And then I'm going to move into the dress. I know that her, um, she's female, she has breast. They're going to catch the light, since the light's kind coming in from this direction, um, her, her scythe is going to cast a shadow, about like that. And then I know as the breasts um, are spherical, but the plane of the breast is going to slowly turn away from the light. So they're going to become darker as it moves down here. And then where her belt is, where it's cinched, she's going to have those dark shadows and pretty bright highlight. Her skirt has a lot of fabric, and for that much fabric to be moving, I don't think it would have that quite that depth of wrinkles towards the end. Otherwise, uh, she's going to be wearing quite a, a, a large amount of skirt. So I think you did well on on starting to capture the movement, but it's just going to be a little bit straighter. These highlights on the skirt are suggesting she's wearing a shiny fabric, which if she's wearing shoes like this and carrying a scythe, um, I doubt she's going to have the, the type of satiny fabric that a princess would have or someone able to afford a, a shiny skirt. So I'm going to tone down some of the waviness. I know it's super fun to draw fabric in, in wind and moving, but I'm going to tone it down just, just a bit. And then this side is going to get a light bit of shadow. And then this brightest color is going to come in and catch the light. So I'm still falling with that, that light source. And then when we see her arms, they're also going to receive highlight going through here, highlight going through here. I think you're focusing on the details like the wrinkles and the folds before you put in the a majority of the value, the overall shape and value. So this part is facing away from the light. And then we can go in and, and add some, some more wrinkles. But we have to remember those wrinkles exist on an overall form. So now there's a bit more cohesion in her clothing, at least in the, the green of the skirt. And it's going to match with 
her face because now we have that that cooler tone on her face as well and then with her hair I think he went a little too desaturated um even though it's gray she's going to have a bit of the environmental color in it and then the hair is also a form so as this is moving um, it's going to have a shadow along the side that faces away from the light. Just as this will have a shadow. I would also say her hair's a little too poofy. Unless she has very thick hair, it probably won't stand out quite that much. you were starting to understand that hair has that band of light. Um, but I think you just made those bands a little too, a little too big, a little too prominent, and then didn't go in and add the separation that happens within hair. Even though there's a shine, some of the dark still moves in. So that's going to help out a lot. And then you're going to have a shadow in here. So this is our brown. And we move that towards purple. There's my shadow. And as I go lighter, I'm going to move it more towards yellow because it's sunlight. I avoid pure black. Uh, even when I am painting traditionally, it's very rare that I have, um, I even use it as a mixing color. I think we can let in a lot more light, um, even though this is in shadow. And because I have a cooler shadow, in her pants, it's going to create a more cohesive palette. She is not just the pants, just the skirt. They are now uh, elements that are tied together by the lighting environment. I would recommend staying zoomed out as well as creating thumbnails. Thumbnails are very useful in how to solve problems visually before you're working on an entire piece and it becomes a pain to repaint something, especially after you've painted detail. The next thing I would focus on is using a cohesive color palette beyond just the local colors. If you're going to shade sunlight, then sunlight is warm, so the highlights are going to be more towards yellow and orange, and if you're going, and then the shadows will be cool and we'll go more towards blue or purple. So there's our original, where the elements are well rendered. They're just very individual to each other. And there's our final, where we have made a lot of the elements more cohesive. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a like. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down in the comments down below. If you wish to have your art submitted, there's also a link down in the doobly-doo. Thank you and have a good one.